All right, we are finally into the final game of the day. This time it is between Cal Poly Pomono, which we just saw Cal Poly slow. This time it is Cal Poly Pomono. They are taking on California State University Fullerton. My name is Joshua Feck Quest here with Bill Jump Carter, ready to get this underway. Some unique bands coming out based on the last bands that we've seen in the series. Got a, got a little nap, was able to get some energy, <laughs> get ready for this. This exciting match. I'm excited to see what Cal State Fullerton can pull out of this against CP Pomona. But you're right, blazing through the pick ban phase Man. right now. We have Rise Cassidy and Tom Kench being banned away from CP Pomona. And then you've got the Jacks Aurelia as well as the Soraka off the table. But what does that leave open? Oh, lo and behold, <laughs> the glorious Lulu as we have seen many, many times. Now, with this being picked up, this gives a lot of options. AD Chaos, one of the uh, <clears throat> one of the better carries on the side for CSUF, and so they're going to want to make sure to prioritize him early and get what he wants. And the Ramus Jungle, this is something that uh, myself and another one of my co-casters, Piscator, has actually talked a lot about. And there's a chance that the Ramus can really pull something out and really do well if you prioritize it correctly and you build against the right team composition. They're picking it very early. Let's see if it pays off. Yeah, Ramus, there's been a lot of Reddit thread uh, kind of focus on Ramus lately. He's been extremely focused on because he is one of the tanks that has kind of just made it through as uh, kind of a sleeper champion in the jungle. If I'm, don't correct me if I'm wrong here, but the last whisper, it's not as uh, as relevant this patch. Am I correct? Now you still get the 40% armor penetration, yes. But it works both of the Lord Dominic's as well as the other one, which I'm mm, failing to miss right now. They're new items, man, yeah. Is, <laughs> is not, you're right, it's not as strong because you need to prioritize that attack speed and all of the bonuses that you get from that. So this leaves a lot of options for someone like Aramis to be able to get into this. They're going to lock in a very strong counter jungler in the Lee Sin to try to get Ramus off of his rocker a little bit early, but already a very big auto attacking champion in the Tristana, that's gonna kind of throw them for a little bit of a loop, but it doesn't matter because if Ramus can get ramped up and can get all the items that he needs, that's when things might get scary. I want to see how we're going to have these different team compositions work out because we saw in the last set that they were very uh, power spike oriented at applying a lot of pressure into the mid game we saw from the last game, especially from the side of UCLA. That was something they're prioritizing. So what are teams gonna go for this time? We see a fast tower push already being started from the side of CP Pomona. But if you look at Cal State Fullerton, they're kind of just going with the standard, we just want a team fight, team fight, team fight, and then just crank away that way. Be very objective based, a very standard composition coming out of CSUF right now. Very standard tanky composition, which yeah, is very, very uh, in the meta right now. A lot of tanks to protect the ADC over on the side of CSUF. We'll see what they rounded out in the mid lane with. But first, we're gonna see what Cal Poly Pomono uh, Pomona, rather, decides to round out their comp with levering over the Wukong, and oh my God, please, Fiddlesticks! I, fun fact about Fekes here: massive Fiddlesticks fan. Actually, used to play Fiddlesticks mid all the time. I don't think we're gonna see it here, but if we do, I'll pretty, I'll be a very giddy little kid. In fact, I used to have a cell phone case of Fiddlesticks, but he's gonna take my dreams away, turn her away, and uh, go over to a Vladimir. Which I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if the Vladimir gets actually locked in right here because yeah. we saw from the last match how strong Vladimir can be once he gets going. Now, in that last game, Martel didn't actually go for the Will of the Ancients. I wouldn't be surprised if that's not the case this time as both Highness Crime as well as Silver Midget need to go for that Will of the Ancients and try to get something done. It's going to get locked in, but look at how much aggression and how fast of a push you have on the side from Pomona right now. Not only do they have the infamous Tristana with the Braum combination, but they also have a lot of strong lane presence and a lot of ability to do so. They can kind of sit back and wait. They know that this Malphite is gonna go to Natsumarin in the top lane. So they can say, all right, what are we gonna do? What are we going to see? Where are we going to put these members? Seeing as how it went up, they said, all right, you know what? We can stick Lulu on Silver Midget and go accordingly that way as the Lulu Oriana matchup is fairly simple, fairly even uh, hardcore farm lane, neither one really able to kill the other, but very strong compositions coming out of both teams. My only concern on the side of Pomona is 
once you get past certain levels, what are you going to do? Because if you look at Cal State Fullerton, very strong team fight, very powerful all in. But if they're not fed, if they don't have the items correctly, Pomona can just steamroll right over them. Both of these teams have late game scalings. This is the most standard, I guess, team composition matchup on both sides that I think I've seen in the entire 5.22. Nobody's going crazy. Nobody's going out of whack. They're going to stick to something consistent, something that they've done over and over again, very well practiced, both of these teams knowing how important this game one victory is. Yeah, and uh, CS, uh, CSUF rounded out their comp. As you said, I mean, it's pretty standard, but Oriana... Very huge with a Malphite and a Ramus on your side. Able to get a very nice Wombo combo coming out. And we'll see if they can play that one up. And of course, you do have on the other side, Pomona. They have a disengage with the um, with the Braum, with the Lulu. It's going to be really interesting to see how these team fights go. Because, yeah, you both have two different agendas. And I think whoever plays them out first is going to uh, come, out the, come out the victor in that exchange. But. I think a lot of it is going to as well rely on which of these teams are able to successfully get to their AD carry because you've got a lot of disengage and protection for the Tristana as well as the Tristana mobility. On the other side, you have a lot of protection for AD Chaos and that Jinx. You've got not only a very hard engage composition, but believe it or not, this team fight composition can essentially play a Jugger Jinx kind of style with three tanky members in the Malphite, the Ramus, as well as the Alistar, and can just play disengage and allow the members of Pomona to really come inside to them. That's when things are going to get interesting. That's what I want to look out for. The Battle of the AD carries in these team fights might prove pivotal to decide who wins and who loses. Yeah, we'll see who wins and who loses. Once we get into game, there's going to be another couple minutes. Do want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Brain Gear and No, uh, no Sugar, only five calorie shot for your brain. Uh, almost like a five hour energy, but it's not. It's Brain Gear. Uh, it's NSF certified daily brain supplement. Go check it out over at Drink Brain Gear. Uh, yeah, drinkbraingear.com. Other. Uh, other uh, sponsor is Alpha Draft. Win real money playing fantasy esports. Join thousands each week drafting teams in League of Legends, Dota 2, CSGO, and Smite. $5 million in payouts will happen just this year alone, so don't miss out on that action. And, of course, Twitch.tv, one of the world's largest streaming uh, companies for video games, and now has a creative section. Go check it out. Thank you for joining us on Twitch and at SummonersCon. My name is Joshua Fakes Quest here with Bill Jump Carter. We'll be back in-game in just a moment. We are back into game number one in the last best of three of the day to see who goes on to the semifinals. My name is Joshua Feck Esquest here with Bill Jump Carter. What are you seeing here, man? Who do you, what do you like? These cops completely different, but all have an agenda or both have an agenda. What do you like about them? Uh, 
All right, well, we'll get into that in just a second here. As uh, we're having a little bit of technical issues on our side as well. Seems to be kind of uh, happening at the end of the night. As uh, We're good. We're back. You're there good. is not a cast without me muting my mic. That okay, is the okay. I was I, I figured, I figured. That works. This is this is the cliche, not Cleveland cliche. It's more the standard typical jump things that I do. It's it's it's, it's fantastic. Oh, but man, to answer your question, to answer your question, I think both of these teams can Minions be very successful gone. if they pump the gold in all the right spaces. Now, what I mean by that is when you look at team compositions and you look at how teams are going to succeed based on their win conditions, a lot of it comes down to the gold efficiency that they're placing. Are they able to pump the gold into the right champions or are they able to write or pump the gold into the right carries? We talk about someone like AD Chaos. He's a very strong, heavy carry, AD carry. So he fits that role very well. You pump the gold into him, he can crush his way to a victory. This same thing goes for someone like Silver Midget. If you're able to pump that gold in, that's when you can find success. So where these teams decide to pump the gold, where these teams decide to focus, that's going to be the decision of whether or not they're going to do well or if they're going to fall flat on their face. Yeah, we'll have to see. Both these teams, they have a pretty standard, uh, huge, I guess, history behind them. Pomona. Pomona. I keep call I've always called them Pomona. I don't know why. It's Pomona. And Fullerton. Been in the CSL Collegiate League for quite a while. Silver Midget. Pretty big name for themselves. Hax Defender as well. And then, of course, AD Chaos. And Big Otis. Also rounding out the carries on the side of CSUF. Really enjoy watching these two teams. It's been a while since I've seen them play together, though. This is going to be a lot of fun. Specifically for me. You can go with the collegiate scene quite a bit. I'm happy that these two are facing off. Now, top lane, Malphite versus a Vladimir. So, an interesting yeah. thing to note about this specific matchup is that Natsuma Rin decided to go for the Corrupting Potion, which, yes, that gives you a little bit more sustain and it gives you actual mana since mana pots are now gone in 5.22, rest in peace. However, <laughs> this also means that he's going to be able to get in and actually uh, have a little bit more damage with his auto attacks. Not only does he have the ability to gap close with his Q, but he can actually get one auto attack, two auto attack, and actually have that burn cause something of importance. So that's what I want to see of how they're going to do. But when you're talking about these teams, you're right. The history that these teams have is a really big deal, uh, not only in the CSL but as well with their team comp or with their team rosters that they have. All of these teams have been play have been playing with each other for a while, and when you get to this level, it always doesn't uh, necessarily rely on the mechanical skill because in some instances, your ability to coordinate with your team and your ability to successfully. Uh, communicate properly and have strategy act accordingly is really what pushes you ahead in a lot of these matches. Now, Cal State Fullerton, we've seen them have that option to do so as well as Pomona. So how they decide to do this in this fight is going to be very vital to their success. Yeah, and it, it is also a factor. Is like you, you, Most of these kids are in colleges, uh, college for four years. You're going to see each other. And if you're playing at this level of Collegiate League of Legends, you're going to see each other year after year. And that's kind of how it is right now. Uh, a lot of these West Coast teams, yeah, they do. They play against each other quite a bit. And some of these teams also have uh, uh, Challenger Rank 5 teams that they meet in actual rank games. So, yeah, they all have a lot of practice with each other and against each other. And it's really interesting seeing all that sort of culminate in a, in a high-stakes tournament. Really excited to watch that here. Not much and of it. Oh, go on. That's something we're going to see develop as well. Uh, while this is a much smaller tournament, only eight teams, and we are essentially in the quarterfinals, you're going to see teams that have a lot of synergy, that have a lot of time playing together, kind of rise to the top. You look at UCI, they have a fairly consistent roster. They were able to do fairly well in this, and that's what you're going to see from a lot of these teams, is not only are you going to have extremely mechanically gifted players, but you're also going to have teams that work together very well and know where to pump their resources in accordingly. If you look at the size of the aggression from both teams, you really don't have anything too out of the ordinary. Hax Defender went back and was able to buy the Stalker's Blade as well as Boots, so you know he wants to be aggressive. You know he wants to try to do something. He's circling around to try to figure out where Atik is, but a beautifully placed Pink Ward by Big Otis is going to kind of spot him out 
and get things stopped right in their tracks. So these are the things that we have to look out for and that we have to notice because they have an escalated level of synergy, because they have an escalated level of communication, how are they going to decide these jungle routes and how are they going to decide where to apply the pressure? Yeah, and that is something that I think will be really pivotal pivotal in this team play as Ramus powerball into anybody and then taunt them. It doesn't take much to gank with a Ramus. And yeah, like you said, it looks like Hax Defender may be wanting to go a little bit more offensive with this build early on, get a more a mobility behind his uh, behind his champion. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> and this is interesting. So, Heine, uh, Heinous Crime, he just, let's keep in mind here, he teleported to a minion. It doesn't matter if you teleport to a minion or a turret now. So, he it's going to be on a long cooldown. I think it's 300 seconds still. And that was a very early dragon being taken, as I was talking about that, by uh, Pomona. It was. We were able to say, all right, what are they going to do? How are they going to do things? They knew exactly where it was. They knew he wasn't in the top side. So, sorry, they knew he wasn't in the top side, so they figured out he was in the bot. All right, so they're going to roll themselves around. They had the ward out. They're like, all right, he's not in the bot now, so he must have gone back. They used that back timing. They took the dragon, and they took a little bit of lead. The first dragon isn't that much. That's about a 100 gold difference because it doesn't give you the global gold really anymore. They're going to have a little bit of extra damage. It's going to help them out quite a bit, but it might not necessarily be enough to do something. An interesting note that I want to look out for is Atik is actually maxing his taunt. So he has three points into his taunt already, which is going to give almost a two-second taunt. So his level six gank, now that he is level six, is going to be very strong if he applies it on the correct target. A lot of trading in the bot lane, and yeah, it's about this point where you want to try to roam down to the bot lane as a Ramus. It looks like he is going towards that area. So he's going to back off, seeing that the, the bot side of Cal Poly are backing, so he's not going to be able to get any spin ball taunts off in that gank. So he's going to let AD Chaos farm up to his little King Hearts content. He has to go back. They are out farming. Uh, well, like, seriously, uh, Fullerton's bot lane is out farming Cal Poly. They are. They've got him pushed up to the turret. Just what they're going to do. They're going to be almost capable at bouncing, or no, successfully capable at almost bouncing this way. But you're going to have lock on Stratos come to lane into time. But if you want to talk about a discrepancy, look at the top lane right now. Heinous Crime up 65 to 49 CS right now. That's going to be a pretty hefty advantage. And the Woda build that we ex seem to expect from a lot of Vladimir's is exactly what he's going to do right now. You're seeing a little bit of an AP composition build come out of Natsume. He wants a little bit of extra damage in this early game to help things out. But without any resistances, this Vladimir is really going to start being able to crank some damage and have a lot more impact as time goes on. Both of their teleports are down. It's going to be a while before they decide to make something up. But there's not much that's really able right now on the side of Cal State Fullerton because look at how well warded defensively this bot lane is. They know they're pushed up. They're going to try to get something. Oh, here it comes. Max Defender able to take away that red buff. And now, Tick B, he's in a bad situation, has to flash over the wall. He does make it out alive, but that is a flash down for the jungler of Fullerton. He was still able to secure the red buff, though, so he got a little bit of an advantage there. Yes, he did end up smiting away the red buff at the last second, so that's going to be a little bit of an advantage for him. A little bit of a good thing there. And we're used to seeing so much aggression from someone like the Ramus as well as a Lee Sin, but both Hacks Defender and Atik are kind of respecting the differences. Again, we see this a lot in Game 1s in a best of three because both teams know how important that game one victory is. So playing safe, playing cautious is something that we're used to seeing in that regard. There's a little bit of an advantage on the side of Pomona right now. That's mainly due to the top lane discrepancy in CS. But at that, with that being said, the longer that this drags out, both teams of these are going to scale. And it's really gonna come down to the team fights if Pomona is able to successfully protect Stratos, if Heinous Crime can get into the members onto AD Chaos, and more importantly, is Big Otis gonna be able to drop a big shockwave? Because as we've seen, one shockwave could change the entirety of the fight. That is what uh, Fullerton's comp is kind of all about, a big wombo combo. But in the bot lane, that can be. 
going to try to defend that bot lane turret, but there's actually a first blood going up over into Natsumi Ray. Nice Super Mega Death Rocket from AD Chaos. Two kills for Fullerton out of nowhere. A little bit of a failed dive right there by Highness Crime. He wanted to try to get something off, but it ended up being too little too late. And the great ag aggression by Atik was just enough to create a perfect linear path for AD Chaos to drop Super Mega Death Rocket and get that advantage. Now we're starting to see a much bigger difference on the side, on the side of the members. Oh, AD Chaos though getting a little bit low. Don't know if that was a little bit of lag. We'll blame lag because that's always the greatest way to blame some kind of mistake. But no, we're seeing a little bit of a difference coming out from these AD carries. Lock on Stratos is going a little bit closer towards the Infinity Edge build. Whereas if you look at AD Chaos, he went straight for the BF Sword and then went into the Zeal. So he has the crit uh, the crit Keystone Mastery. He's going to be sitting on top of that. And he's going to be trying to itemize himself a little bit differently, relying on a little bit more of that attack speed to help nullify a lot of that uh, reduced attack speed coming out of the second. Oh, look My at this. My goodness. Man, the power of Ramus right now is pretty huge. He doesn't really have that much. He has Cinder Hulk. And then, of course, his... Uh, his uh, Oh, man, I mean, I forget what Ramus, uh, Ramus is a shield is, but it does return damage like a sword mail, so a lot of damage coming out from Ramus just because Hack's Defender is actually attacking him. And that's what Taunt does for you, of course. And it also brings you into the, the Cinder Hulk, so very nicely played by Action B. He uh, has a really good grasp of the power on Ramus right now. He does, but what we haven't seen is just this continued amount of aggression that we're used to seeing from someone like Remus. But just as I say that, he's lurking around right here for Heinous Prime. He might want to do something. He throws his defensive ball curl out to help protect him a little bit of damage, but it might not be enough to get something done. Now we're seeing the rotations. Heinous Prime coming to the mid lane as well as Hack's Defender. Hack there. Ball on top of the Axe Defender. Oh, big unstoppable force after the teleport coming in from that movie Rin. Nicely played, and there's a knockup on the heinous crime. He's gonna go down, and it's double kill for Natsumi Rin. And that is the AP power of that blasting wand. Such a great reaction speed right there by Natsumi to just ult or to teleport in. Pops the ultimate down, is able to get two kills with that, but 80 Chaos oh, is 80 cut out. Yeah, he is. He's going to get locked down and exploded with the explosive shot. Very nicely picked up on the bot lane for Cal Poly. And that's their saving grace right now because that was their first kill of the game. They're still ahead in gold, though. Wait, Hunting didn't want to find that. And that's going to be a little bit of an equalization. But we talked so much about how well that the members of Fullerton are doing right now. They were able to have a beautiful reaction on something. Natsumi comes in, gets a double kill, is able to complete his Rod of Ages. But the goal lead is still fairly on the side of Pomona just because of how well they're CSing. Every member is in the lead. And while we talk a lot about how the playmaking can really be the end all be all, it all comes down to how much gold you're able to have onto your champion. And that's exactly what Pomona is prioritizing right now. They're prioritizing gold, they're prioritizing farm, because they know they scale just as well. Yes, you've got the big crazy wombo combo as they like to call it, but we also have the damage, we have the disengage and the protection to keep Stratos in the bay in the best spot possible. So they're just gonna sit back, try to do something. They're gonna try to take the second dragon, but Atik is here now. Might try to contest this, it might be a little too late. Though. Death Rocket gonna be blocked by Stratus, so that is down. Yeah, dragon, second dragon, I should say, goes over. Oh, Polly, gonna keep control of that. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Heinous Crime able to poke out so well. He has the Woda, quite a bit of damage. Is the uh, Hemo Plays gonna be enough? It is not. He's going to escape. So he needs to be careful. He's been a lot more successful roaming. He's not able to outshove uh, Vladimir. It's all about pressuring him outside of this lane. That he has fairly decent ward coverage. If they come up through the jungle, there's not much they can do. But with four members grouping in the mid lane, he's forced to continuously apply that pressure. Look at Atik. Atik is forced to roam up a little bit. Heinous Crime has double uh, double CDR right now, so that's his entire focus is just applying pressure. He's up 40 CS on an Atsume, and that's exactly what he's trying to do is apply this pressure, 
uh, really force the aggression while the rest of his team continues to push themselves out because this alleviates pressure off of the mid lane so they can get something done and this allows Stratos to go towards the bottom, get his own farm set up, get that wave put in a good spot to start to get a mega wave forming. And this is Pomona started to get things done. Oh, Flash and the taunt from Atkin B, but a lot used just to kill the Lulu. Let's see if it's worth it here. To take up most of the damage there. Silver Midget, he held on to the wild growth, so still pretty big for CFU or uh, CSU Fullerton going into this. While getting these little advantages are obviously, obviously something you want to try to employ, what do you get out of that? That's always the question, especially in 5.22, is how are we going to take this advantage and push it even further? They weren't able to get any capitalization off of that because you still had Stratos, you still had the other members in the mid lane kind of warding themselves off. Natsume wasn't even able to get that top turret. So while that was a good effort, while it was a good attempt to get something done, it really didn't prove too much. They're gonna try to hack away at this now as you're starting to see a little bit of damage, but the wall comes up for Mookie. And again, another 12 effort by uh, CSUF. But oh, just as I say that, oh. Big, big unstoppable force in the back line. Super Mega Death Rocket going to finish off Mookie's. And that's going to be a mid lane turret going down in favor of Fullerton. They just need to focus it. AD Chaos actually is taking up the turret shot, so it's going to be repelled. And now Heinous Crime is here. He flashes in. Alt not going to get too much out of it, but a shutdown he does go over to Silver Midget onto Natsumi uh, Rin. So now it's actually Cal Counter, Cal Poly now on the offensive. We're going to give a little, then we're going to take a lot. That's exactly what they were thinking. A great roam by Highness Crime to come around and get something done. We talk a lot about, uh, at the early game of this, where are teams going to pump their gold? Where are they going to find the most elevated level of efficiency? And for Cal State Fullerton, it's all about getting the gold into the hands of their AD carry. AD Chaos right now, 3, 1, and 0. Has the Infinity Edge completed as well as the zeal a little bit behind in farm but that doesn't mean it's unnecessary there is an 18 minute timer which means that the rift herald is still available that's going to be the immediate focus for cal state fulton they're going to push in they're still down a little bit in gold but they're going to try to push their advantage and turn that gold discrepancy into item disparity and objective control as their focus is right on the rift herald they get it they secure it time to push yeah and it goes over to the tanky jungler He's going to hold on to that and surprisingly not go directly in the lane, but they are going to try to catch Mookie's out. A lot of knockup and DC coming out. He still gets out though. Super Mega Death Rift blocked by Lock on Stratus. And now Akin may be in trouble. Actually, you know, the big cow is Suzuki. Suzuki, I should say, going down. And now they can't take advantage of the Rift Herald. Another back and forth. That's what we've seen. And the entire pre-20 minutes of this game. It's one player does one thing, the other player does the thing. Oh, oh my god, Atkinsby yeah, Atkin has the uh, mo uh, mobility boots and the home guards. He just flew down there and completely disengaged that mid lane siege. Goodness. But all oh, the entire time is just happening. That's going to be Ray. No, it's going to be Rin, I should say. The teleport just decided to split push the top lane. Finally is able to knock down that turret and a little bit of an advantage going into the hands of Fullerton. He's been at that turret probably for the last five minutes, cranking, doing everything he can to try to just alleviate a lot of pressure and force these waves to go back, make Highness Crime have to try to get something else. You've got dragons spawning in about a minute now. This is probably going to be where we see our first big fight because as we talked about, both teams have a very, very different styles of team fight, but both very successful styles of team fight it's going to come down to where are they going to focus in this obviously a lot of the focus from Pomona is protecting Stratos he's 2-1-1 one, and one, crushing AD Chaos and farm right now so being able to protect him and keep him in the limelight is what they're going to want to try to do and then for Cal State Fullerton it's a decision what are we going to do Whoa. oh it was a decision do we want to do it do we want to do it that's what they're doing that's what they have to decide are we going to go on the aggressive are we going to try for the quote-unquote Wombo Combo with Big Otis and a Shockwave? Or are we going to sit back and just play the Protect game for AD Chaos? It's all going to come down to which decision they decide to make and how they decide to prioritize 
this specific decision because that's going to decide whether or not they find victory or they fail as the dragon is spawning teleport available on that sume big fight about to happen uh, Jacket's trying to get in position Susie k kai i think Susie kai actually taking up a lot of damage mookie gets his locked but there's the teleport from natsumi big unstoppable force 80 chaos is going to pick up some kills for himself as well as big otis with a massive shockwave Silver Midget, full health, not anymore though. He's gonna go down, double kill for Big Otis. And man, that was a four for zero in favor of Fullerton. Huge, huge power spike for them. Disaster struck when they were able to get on Stratos. We talked about this in the champ select. If they can get to the Tristana, every piece of the team fight from Pomona falls apart. What did they do? They throw the ball on top of Natsume. The Unstoppable Force did not hit him. However, the Shockwave did. That was a beautiful amount of chain CC to try to get something done. Stratos goes down immediately, and the rest of Pomona fell apart. A great job by AD Chaos to prioritize the vision or prioritize the targets correctly, and an even better job by Otis to use beautiful ball control to emit disaster from the side of Pomona. A great job, a great high turn, and now they're the one in the lead. They're the one in the driver's seat. They get the kills, they get the dragon. They haven't taken the turret yet, but it's next on the menu. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. <coughs> Coming into this game and actually taking the gold advantage over onto Fullerton. So, a tick B actually doing really well on this ram. It's 0 0 9. Almost. That's a 90% uh, kill participation. Very, very well. And Kai. Big, uh, soaking up a lot of the damage initially. We've been seeing that in these team fights. I keep thinking when Susie's getting caught out, but then ends up kind of just getting to the back line and replacing himself with a, uh, a tick. And it's been working out very well. Nobody's able to touch AD Chaos yet. And Big Otis also kind of in the back line, just throwing the ball wherever he can. Getting shockwaves. And you're having a lot of hidden damage as well come out of Natsume. He went for the Rod of Ages as well as the Abyssal yeah. Scepter. So he's cra he's having a lot more damage output than what you might expect from someone like a Malphite to have, which we generally see build a lot more tanky style. And this is proving very beneficial to them because you can do stuff like this, oh. just go right in. Yeah, Tick B. Those <laughs> splash in and the turret does go down. Big wild growth coming out. What's it going to get? Death Deathmarker whips everything there is the big shockwave and unstoppable force coming out. Axe Defender barely making it out. It's still three for, no, two for zero. There's barely anybody on Fullerton that was touched. Health bars are not blinking. They're just going to tank up this turret. 5.22, you get a little bit of a lead and you push it into a stupid crazy advantage. They took one tower. They were able to get the second tower and the great flash by Atik made everyone go in and then it came down to patience. Natsume waited for his ultimate, was able to get a three-man ultimate. Big Otis waited for his shockwave, threw it down, and got three members of Pomona into that. That not only was able to secure a victory, three for zero in the fight, but that also secured a final three towers and an inhibitor on the docket. This is Cal State Fullerton finally rolling on all cylinders. We were very concerned about how the Ramus pick was going to work out because of how early they picked it up in their lineup, but we're eating our words as Atik, 0, 0, and 11. He has so much movement speed with the mobility boots as well as sitting on now a dead man's plate, and this is just such a strong set of lineup and an even better prioritization by every member of of Cal State Fullerton. We talked about it was the decision. Do we want to go aggressive? Do we want to sit back and def uh, defend? You can make that decision at the same time. They do this in the team fights. They sit back, they wait, they make sure no one can get to 80 Chaos. And then what do they do? Then they go on the offensive. Netsune and Big Otis pulling up big, pulling up strong. And this is Cal State Fullerton in the lead and in control. Yeah, and there's so much AoE damage on the side of Fullerton. If you leave AD Chaos alone, if you leave Big Otis alone, that's a lot of damage. But let's not forget about Tick Kib. He is, his ultimate does uh, trimmers do AOE damage as well. He's act and everyone targeting him. If he has the defensive ball girl, he's gonna do a ton of damage. Also, he's doing so good on this Ramus. He even able to counter jungle Elise Sin. I don't know about counter jungle, but uh, keep Elise Sin out of his own out of his jungle. Very interesting play. Tick B, he's gonna come around the backside. He's the only one able to get caught here. He is going to go down. Maybe chaos on a rampage. They may just go straight up to the Baron now. 
They have re no reason not to. That's two versions of CC down on the side of Pomona. There's not much that they can do to really counteract this. You need that extra pill and you need those concussive blows to help you into these team fights. If you saw when that punk, when the uh, punk trick taunt was used by a teeth, Stratos was just pounding away with him with damage and there was nothing to be gained. This is a very strong round, especially for the defensive curl, but Hax lurking around. He wants to steal. This is really well played. Oh, no, he does not get the steal. Hax Defender, he's barely going to make it out. But two... Oh, oh. never mind. Super Mega Death Rocket could have chased him to his death. And that was really... Actually, that's a nice answer by Cal Poly. They were able to take two turrets in the mid lane as a consolation prize. So, let's see if they can convert that or just defend from Baron. It was a great rotation. It would have been better if they would have been able to open up the base, but they were unable to do so. It was a little bit gained where a lot was lost because now you have a lot more pressure on the side of Fullerton to pull something out. Teleport is available on Natsume. Atik actually has a pretty decent wave player if he decides to pop his ultimate. It's on a fairly short cooldown if you think about it in that it's actually sitting on it's only on a 60 second cooldown, so he could technically do that. Try to get something done. He's going to push. You're going to have other members doing up, but it looks like they're all five just going to form into the top lane. They're going to push as a team. They say, you know what? We've done everything else as a team. There's no sense in splitting up now. Let's just keep doing what we know how to do. That's going to be the inner turret. Now, the inhibitor turret is next on the menu. They've got lots of minions. Let's see what they do. Oh, man, and no one's there to defend him. Lock on Stratus coming over. Need a little bit more than that. Cal Poly's wondering what they really need to do. Big ultimate on the Silver Vision. Nice ultimate coming back from Highness uh, Heinous Crime, but it's not going to be enough. A tick B barely makes it out of life. Actually, no, he finally does fall, but so many health bars going down on the side of Cal Poly. Big Otis and AD Chaos just destroying them, and that is going to be the push to the game. They're going to get it. They've got one less turret. There's really nothing that the members that they can do. Oh, they're going to take down the kill. This might be the game. Oh, no, this is definitely definitely the game. You have AD Chaos. He's still full health. Even if you take him down now, he's still going to take out the Nexus. Very, very solid play by CSU Fullerton. A lot of hype behind him in this game, or coming into this game, and there's a reason why. It all came down to where did they want to prioritize their decision making into the team fights. That's the prowess that you have when a team has been playing together for a while and they've established the synergy. Their team fight was so methodical in the early stages of the game. It got a little messy at the very end, but it doesn't matter because they ended up pulling out a victory. They pumped the gold in all the right places, but more importantly, if you look at the way they did it, they evenly dispersed the gold accordingly because they that was how confident they were in their team fighting ability 11.5k 11.7k for the two big carries in 80 chaos and big otis so that's what they were wanting to do they wanted the gold in the right spots they wanted to be able to push forward as a team that's exactly what they decided when that composition was created that's exactly what they decided when they got into the team they executed it to perfection and now pomona is one game away from getting knocked out of the west coast regional yeah, and this will be, uh, we're going to see how this pick and ban phase changes in this next game because, I mean, that got really out of control very fast. And yeah, it, like you said, sloppy toward the end, but it, it, I, don't, I don't think Fullerton cared at that point. They just wanted to get in there, kill things, look good, put on a show for Summoner's Con. And that's what we're here for. And in fact, my name is Joshua Fekas Quest here with Bill Jump Carter. We're going to get into this game number two as soon as possible, setting up the lobby right now. Stick around and we'll be back in just a moment.
We are back for game number two in this best of three between Fullerton and Pomona. My name is Joshua Fekas Quest here with Bill Jump Carter. What do you expect to see in these picks and bands? Where do you have two of them? I want to see how they're going to change things up. We do have a little bit of a side swap. So we've got Fullerton on the blue side now, Pomona on the red. And it's going to be a prioritization. You actually have the Jinx being banned away from themselves. Uh, Fullerton not wanting to really deal with that at all. They have something else in their head. I want to see if they decide to change things up and change their composition, or if they decide to go with this strong team fight pomp composition. <clears throat> excuse me, that they went the last time. Now that being said, oh, there's yeah. a lot of different options that Pomona can apply, and the Ramus off the table is the first thing. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see the Ramus at all. Vladimir also banned out. Heinous Crime did do quite a bit of power, uh, a bit of damage, I should say, up in the top lane against Natsumi's Malphite. So that is going to be off the table this time around. But this time, this game, Natsumi on uh, Cal, Cal, uh, Cal University Fullerton, they have first pick. What would you first pick? I mean, you've seen what happened last game. Malphite off the table as well, so that's not going to be a first pick. I don't know if Lulu will be it, though. I think that Lulu is an option, Ooh. but Tom Kench is much, much higher on the list of possibilities. Ah. Getting that into Suzukai is very important because we saw last game a lot of the success, yes, was on Big Otis and Natsume really getting ahead, but AD Chaos finished very strong, very solid that game. So having that locked down is very important, but this leaves the options open for Cal State Fullerton. They locked down the Alistar to help get a little bit more protection and engage for Mookies, but the Jack, something that was banned away from them in game one, is actually going to get taken up by Heinous Crime, and we saw how strong he was on the 1v1 versus Natsume. Now put him in a champion that can snowball faster than someone as a Vladimir. This might be scary for Fullerton if they don't play their if they don't play their cards right. Yeah, we've seen one Jack so far in this uh, in the uh, West Coast Regionals. Did very well. Get the uh, Gwinsu's Rage Blade and just kind of run over the enemy team. Split push for days, and that's kind of what you do as Jacks in the first place. But now he has mixed damage, and it's extremely hard to counter him so we're gonna see how uh, heinous crimes plays him but a tick b with them taking in jacks and uh, the support alistar and that's taken away from uh, uh suzai kai it leaves a lot of power picks open for fullerton it does indeed atik is able to get on a little bit heavier pressure champion in that elise early but 80 chaos actually gets put onto the tristana now funny enough cal state fullerton has in-house tournaments all the time and throughout the early stages of that tournament 80 chaos played nothing but tristana and it ended up being banned away from him every single game in the later stages of the tournament because of how strong he performed on that tristana his positioning is near flawless when he gets him when he gets himself in the in the place that he wants to be and considering the new changes to 80 carry when you get that static shiv rapid fire cannon combination that turns tristana into a scary champion especially when you put it in the hands of someone so talented so what is going to be done as a result by pomona they're going to get the misfortune which is a champion we haven't touched on very much as well as it looks like it's going to be the jarvin yeah i'm really excited about both of those picks locking someone in your cataclysm opens them up for a huge barrage of the bullet i'm uh, not the bullet time the um uh 
misfortune alt man i'm like losing it right now this has been a long day for me but um now her ultimate crits it is extremely oh it is bullet time by the way double ups are cute i got it no problem i'm still sane anyways yeah bullet time on misfortune extremely powerful now i really enjoy the misfortune now the one thing that she lacks is no mobility that might play a, a, be a huge factor going against Fullerton. But we have a Trindamir hovered over. Haven't seen him all tournament. Can kind of play the same role as a Jax. He can. <coughs> he can indeed now with the crit mastery. It hurts him a little bit, but it doesn't make him super weak. And that's also going to be an Oriana again locked in for Big Otis. He had a lot of stra He had a lot of strength. He had a lot of power in that in game one he wants to just try to continue that over into game two i'm not too sure how well it's going to fit into the composition because you have a lot more split push uh more of a split push siege composition even a pick in some instances coming out of the members from cal state fullerton so the oriana doesn't mesh as well as what it did in the last but it's still going to be a comfort champion for big otis and looking at the side of team fights <laughs> that's going to be Pomona's strength. Now, if you look at the old school season two combination of Jarvan the fourth as well as Misfortune, that's what they're going to put into. Hax Defender is going to take that into the jungle as well as Silver Midget getting put on a nice solid control mage. In the Victor, going to try to be a little bit more of a playmaker. And the team fight composition that Fullerton had got flipped by, around, by white, right back around. Words are hard sometimes. Pomona going to take the team fight composition and they're going to try to find success with that two very different comps again but a team fight still holding true to at least one side it worked really well for fullerton last game and yeah like you said pomona we're gonna see if they can turn that around on them but they didn't have to go against tom kinch and tom kinch i feel like and okay so two of these champions can actually deny plays at least with the repel and the tom kinch by swallowing your enemy or your ally I think that's going to be really huge when going against this Pomona team team fight comp. It's going to be it's going to be interesting, especially considering the fact of what the composition is going to play into each other really. Fullerton has to be a little bit more cautious and a little bit more careful than they were in the last game. They had so much CC, so much lockdown that they could kind of uh you know bang their head against the keyboard and I guess pretty much decide when they wanted to press R, but now it's a lot more methodical. They're going to have to have a lot more pressure to be able to do something. Can they do it? Most certainly. If you look on the side <clears throat> of Fullerton in the top lane, Natsume went with the, an Ignite as opposed to that Teleport. So he's going to be applying a lot of lane pressure. He's going to want to try to do the split push in that regard. But you also have a lot of uh, sieging potential and a lot of power coming out of this Tristana Tom as well as the Oriana. That's going to make things great. Again, the same situation as last game. Where are you going to pump your gold? Where are you going to create your efficiency? And how are you going to turn that efficiency into a lead? There's a lot of decisions that both teams are going to have to make. But more importantly, Fullerton's going to have to try to find a way not to play into Pomona because Pomona's team fight composition is very strong, very ruthless. And if they get going, this might spell trouble for Fullerton. Yeah, we're going to have to see how well they can coordinate their team fight. And uh, we're going to be back on the rift in about a minute, 50 seconds, about two minutes or so. Do you want to give a shout out to our sponsors before we go to a quick break? Brain Gear, Twitch.tv, and Alpha Draft. My name is Joshua Fekas Quest here with Bill Jump Carter. We'll be back in just a moment on the rift. Stick around.
right, we are in game number two. Some pings already coming down from, uh, I think that's, yeah, that's Fullerton. Now some other pings coming down from Pomona. Let's see well, where they go. They are grouping thing. together, looking possibly to invade in onto Fullerton. So, yeah. interesting thing to note, as we were in the break, did Tell a me. little research, did a little this and that, and like come that. to find out... We talk a lot about how Trindamir has kind of made a rise since the Warlord Bloodlust made its debut. However, Natsume Ren actually has triple the games on Trindamir that he has on every other champion. Almost 150 games played Ooh. in the last season. So, so don't call pick. it a one trick. Don't call it a one trick, but you could definitely call it a comfort pick. This is very self-explanatory on why the Ignite is going to make things a whole lot better for him because he's going to be very confident. He's going to be very, um, I guess, aggressive. And that's what I want to see. How is he going to do? How is he going to kind of punish Highness Crime? And the question is, will he punish him? Because in the last game, while he did very well on that Malphite pick, the early game was very very difficult for him. Heinous Crime not only was able to take the early tower, pushed him into the inner tower, and really had a heavy CS advantage on him. So, is this comfort pick going to make things easier, or is Heinous Crime going to just make things more heinous for Natsumi Rind? Uh, that is a question that only time will tell, as they are meeting in the top lane now. Yeah, very interesting matchup. And it's very, yeah, like you said, comfort pick is very convenient that Trindamir is just happens to be uh, I don't know if he's... Is he meta? Is that, is that a thing? He's a meta right now? I mean, Gwensu's Rage Blade kind of We're in the preseason. There's not yeah. technically a meta yet, so yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll hold off on that. Yeah, and that's kind of why you're seeing IEM. Uh, they're on the previous patch, the 5.21 patch, because... I mean, I mean the preseason patch still has quite a few kinks to work out, so... That's why they are on that one, but... The old patch is not near as fun as this one, so we're going to show this one. That's why I like casting for CSL. And... <laughs> See some misfortune in that bot lane. I'm really excited about misfortune. Haven't got to see her all season, all uh, I mean, all tournament really. Haven't seen her picked in even uh, high le high level elo games that I cast. She is not that she is in a rough spot personally, but teams haven't played her in so long right. that it's kind of taking them a while to learn and be comfortable enough to pull up into team play. Because you're right, while she has so much damage potential and she can really crank things out, the difficulty is actually, we might have to pause, look at that Sumi Rin. Yeah, there is a Ignite on that Sumi though, and here comes Hax Defender, so it was a nice bait. He's gonna try to salvage, just get a oh. kill, or just get out, very nicely played, and a tick, that's his own. Thank you, it's cocooning. Didn't really work out for him, so he's just gonna call that a day and just go back to whatever he was doing. <laughs> Oh man, they're just gonna force a 2v2. They're still hanging out in the top lane. The aggressiveness is coming on. See, look at that damage coming out of Stratos. Yeah. This is kind of what we were talking about earlier of how much he can pump out in this. But we might have to pause because if you glance at the top lane, look at this right now. Oh, oh the flash misses. Flash misses, Cocoon. Not going to hit there. He's going to get out, repel out of harm's way. It's a little bit risky and it did not pay off. So that's a flash down for a tick. That's two flashes down for the top and the jungler for Fullerton. They're so confident in their play right now that they're just, cow or they're not, or they're making mistakes that you're not used to seeing from them or that we even saw in the last game. They're in comfort champions, they're in comfort picks, so they're just gonna say, you know what? We're gonna try to do this, we're gonna try to make this happen. It didn't end up working out, but no harm, no foul, as both teams are just gonna reset themselves. Junglers are gonna move themselves around the map. Hax is gonna go back, have his first buy, you're gonna have the bot lane doing the same thing over and over. This is kind of what we're talking about, but 80 Chaos doesn't get caught out because Tom Kench is the greatest champion to play against as we'd love to know. I, yeah, now, yeah, that's the reason why he's so great to play against. Completely deny any sort of play potential. But I don't think it's gonna go in the favor of 80 Chaos. Be careful, but he knows what he's doing. Tick B is in the bot lane. He's doing Lock Stratus gonna go down first blood going over to ad chaos all plans here I'm, I'm just gonna vomit you out you're gonna get killed and we're gonna walk away and just do regular things oh gosh. that is the power of tom kench and pomona's decision to pass over that was a great decision or was a great capitalization that fullerton was able to do being able to pick up that kick throw it right into suzuki that gets a kill onto their ad carry now what did we talk about in the last game 
he has the potential to snowball and do very, very well on not only any AD carry, but Tristana specifically. Once he gets rolling with that champion, that's when things become very deadly for the other team. So getting a kill into him, pumping that gold into his pockets are going to be very vital to their success if they want to try to do something. Not too much of a goal lead, but something big could happen soon if Pomona's not careful. Yeah, and I mean, he, he's going to come back with a BF sword, so there is quite a bit of power in his arsenal. We'll see what he can translate that into. As he's not going to build the straight attack speed. And yeah, we did see a Tristana earlier in the day. He built straight attack speed. Didn't really work out for him. I like the damage being put on the AD Chaos first. Does he already have an attack speed steroid? With a rapid fire. But meanwhile, in the top lane, it's going pretty even so far. I mean, it's trying to both of them just ready to really gauge up to each other. It's been interesting They're so far to watch. Gonna respect the gonna respect the discrepancy a little bit. You haven't had too much action, you're right, on that side. And this is where we get into this situation as well, where you don't want too much of an overcommit by uh, the members of, Popo of Pomona. They're on the back wall right now, so if they lose this game, they're done, they're out, sorry, pack up your lunch and go home. That's the situation that they're definitely aware of and they have to worry about. So while you have a lot of aggression and a lot of potential coming out of their team composition, they have to do it methodically. They have to pick the right spot because if they don't, Disaster could strike, Bulletin could run away with it, and that could be the end for Pomona. Yeah, you can pack up your... Oh, hold on. We'll talk about that in a second. He's getting eaten. He's spit back out. He is in the bot lane, but Tax Defender in the top lane. Natsumi is going to be able to make it out. Actually does, and that is going to be huge. Just drew a lot of attention in the top lane. Let's see what... Fullerton can do to capitalize on that. Trindamir surviving by the skin of his teeth, something that he's known to well to do and is able to get off successfully. That forces a back, but he's able to go back, buy a Bilgewater Cutlass, have a little bit more sticky potential onto Highness Crime. And this is where you're going to start to see, all right, how well can this Trindamir actually duel with the Jax? Now, old Jax, obviously, there was a lot of power that this Jax could have because he was able to throw up his abilities and just dodge out all of the auto attacks from the Trindamir. But now with the changes, are is this uh, sustain that you have from the World of Bloodlust going to make it easier for an auto attack based champion such as Trindamir to really pound away at this Jax? Or is it going to prove null and void because the Jax is going for something such as a yeah, the bullet time getting exhausted. Get chaos. He's gonna flash in after the rocket jump. Get the kill on the Mookies. Has the auto the uh, reset of the rocket jump, but does not want to tower dive onto the lock on Stratus. So another kill picked up for Fullerton's bot lane on the chaos. That's exactly what they wanted. This is the power of Tom Kench. We've talked about it over and over again. This is why he's 100% pick banned because the power that you can crank up is too strong. They capitalized flawlessly. Mookie's was level five. He did not have the Unbreakable Will available to cancel out the Devourer. So they they ate him up. They got the damage. A good little play by AD Chaos to try to get things done. Forces the flash out of himself, but it doesn't matter. He'll take that well and above and beyond the Call of Duty as he's gonna go back with 1,500 gold in his pocket. Going to be able to change up his item slots, change up some extra items, goes back, buys the boots, buys the zeal, and what we talked about, the very scary Tristana, might start to happen fairly soon. Yeah, this is the ideal situation when you're the AD carry. We have a top lane fight here. Knight goes down on a heinous crime. I don't think Natsumi can do anything about it, though. He's just going to heal himself, and that's going to be all she wrote for that aggression, because now his ultimate's down, he needs get back his heinous crime he does have it seems like more damage output up front and there it is there's the flash there's the kill heinous crime nicely played just like a tick is gonna try to get some revenge here it's gonna be hard though heinous crime is so powerful he actually he's got a double kill 2v1 in the top lane <coughs> that's the power of a jacks believe it or not the 25 for the 25 movement speed on the boot doesn't seem like a lot but it ended up working out great we're gonna have to pause though his 80 chaos it's a little bit caught out. Ooh, beautiful cancel right there. Oh my god. Not time that any better. Canceling out the headbutt from Mookie's with the buster shot of AD Chaos. Very well played. Tom 
Kinch just getting down there. Using his ultimate. Because they're not going to use the ultimate much for much else. So might as well just use it to get back to lane. Makes it help out. Allows for some successful roaming on that end. But back to the Jax. Heinous crime. He did this in the last game. He got an advantage and he pushed it to a very big pressure. And that's exactly what he's doing in this. He had the pickaxe. He had the boots. He was able to sustain the all-in from that Sume. And now what does he do? He goes back, buys a Ginsu Rage Blade, and is going to be able to have so much damage. There's not much that this Trinimir is going to be able to do because the burst damage and the power coming out of Ginsu's Rage Blade is just going to be too much for him to handle at this point in time. Give him some items, allow him to scale up a little bit. Maybe that's a possibility, but right now, Jax is just way too strong for him to be able to handle. All in from Silver Midget. Gonna bring him back in with the shockwave. A tick is there. Flash from Big Otis. Nothing following it up though. And now he has to be careful because a victor can kite back easy. He can indeed. Gets away safely. Makes that easy done and go. He also had the MK2 upgrade. So just a little bit of extra stuff there to help himself out. Flash for Flash again. This has been a teach time. Pretty much every single time he goes in for a crazy gank, but oh, you're not in a good spot right now. So much damage going down on him. That's Defender. Hex Defender takes that one out. No problem. Well, more aggression in the bot lane. Bullet time comes out. Not gonna hit as much as they want to. He chaos takes it out of the life. Susie Kai spits out the big cow and just disengages here. They need to be careful. Hax Defender making his way to the bot lane. They may just go ahead and take the bot lane turret and give some, uh, get some gold into Pomona's pocket. This is a lot more proactive Pomona that we saw in game one. If you look at what they did in game two, they sat back, they waited, and it ended up costing them the game. Now they're being a little bit more aggressive. They've got lanes that can play aggressive. They've got champions that can be a lot more proactive on things. Hax Defender is going very hard damage early as he's going for that. They're going to go for the dragon now. And this is just what they have decided with their team composition. They're going to be a little bit stronger. They're going to be a little bit faster. And they're going to try to force the issue onto Fullerton. They're doing it very well. They've got about a 2,000 goldie. They're going to secure this dragon and really start to put the pressure on. They have to force a game three. They have to win this if they want to stay alive. So what better way to do it than to start with the pressure start with the advantage and really force Fullerton to make the play. Yeah, and I think the big wild card onto Fullerton is this Trendemir right now. He doesn't seem like, I mean, he's, I know he's, he doesn't seem like, he isn't not, he's not really winning his lane very well. He doesn't have teleport. So what do you do with this Trendemir on this team comp that Fullerton has brought? So the difficulty with the Trendemir is he can't fight the Jacks right now. The advantage to the Trendemir is, <coughs> excuse me, Give him a little bit, he has a lot of split push power. The another disadvantage though, which kind of sets him back even farther, is he doesn't have teleport. So if he goes to do the split push, he's fully 100% committed to that split push. That's what he has to do, because otherwise there's nothing else that he can do for it. Here we go though, they're trying to help him go oh! out that top lane. Tick and Suzy Kai up there in the top lane. The boss goes down on a heinous crime, he's gonna be eaten. And it's actually gonna avoid the uh the cocoon for it, but it doesn't matter. Shutdown does go over to Matsumi Rin. And now that is going to be top lane. And that's, I guess that's how you bring your top lane back into it. Just go help. That's exactly correct. They're able to get the gold onto the Jax. Give him a little bit of extra oomph to help himself out. They're going to get a turret. There's going to be a little bit of a counter push from the members of Pomona to try to get something done. There's only one member, but she's got a decent amount of wave clear. They're going to disengage as AD Chaos is pushing himself in the bot lane, forced to disengage and do this, but a great equalizer right there by Cal State Fullerton oh. to try to get things done. Help himself out. 80 Chaos, though. Oh, Got a well, cog, buddy. Well, Buki does not have the uh, stomp now. He doesn't have the knockup. He's just going to try to delay. Hey, he was waiting for that bullet time to come out. Saved his buster shot. Did not work out. Very nicely played by Lock on Stratus. Buki's even getting in there. Like I said, missed his pulverize. Still extra 100, extra 150 gold into the pockets of Strata, so that's yeah. going to make things a lot easier for her. That's now a decision of, all right, what is this misfortune going to do with things? Because we talk a lot about, okay, there's a lot of advantage coming out of Hax Defender. There's a much bigger advantage on the side of Heinous Crime. But the misfortune, a pick that we all know is very strong right now, how is she going to play into these things? The kill that she got 
worked out flawlessly. She gets the Essence Reaver to have, have a little bit more damage and CDR to help things move itself along as we see a very big split build come out of AD Chaos. And this is crunch time. Where are you going to see these teams form up around? Where are you going to see teams find advantage? Ooh, big Otis is going to be turret though. Shockwave not going to be able to save him. Even the turret shots. Hax Defender is going to make it out. But Natsumi Rin still pushing the bot lane this entire time. I think the top lane turret. So we can force Pomona to answer back with the mid lane turret. But it looks like, looks like Natsumi Rin be sticking to this bot lane too. Well, no, he's actually gonna go back. Take out the pink, pink ward first. Don't want, anybody, don't want anybody to see him. It's a private push. The, the basic definition of League of Legends give and take. You go on advantage, we go on under the advantage. We're going to try to find something out of a little bit of a misstep of the other team. It was a beautiful job by Hacks Defender to secure the kill. On to Big Otis, he's being a lot more proactive in this game and helping things along. But Natsume Ryan is just helping himself out by doing it. Here comes the Teleport though. Oh man, yeah, Teleport, that is going to be Jax. Coming into the fray, bullet time, gonna do quite a bit of damage. In fact, getting a double kill for Lock on Stratus. So, Morton just being caught off guard and Pomona punishing him for it. That's going to be two kills into the pocket of Stratos as well. That's exactly what they need. They need to get on some gold onto this champion. They need to get some gold onto this player, help their confidence level up a little bit, and push forward accordingly. Natsumi Rin got CC locked so hard that he wasn't able to pop his ultimate. That's exactly what every member of Pomona, Pomona wants to be able to do. Knock him down, get him out of the fight before he becomes relevant. And this is a difficult spot now that Fullerton faces. Their comp is a little bit wonky. They don't have a very strong one way or another decision that they need to make. So, what are they going to do to try to combat that? They have to split push. They have to move themselves around and try to apply pressure across the map. That's so difficult with how great Pomona is being at applying themselves around the map. They're getting a lot better vision control. It's died though, just as I said that, so we're not actually gonna see that as evident. But still, they're being a lot more proactive with their movements, they're being a lot more proactive with their warding, and this early composition as far as pressure and as far as lanes that they are done is really starting to pay off as they're starting to hit their power spikes and push further into the lead. Gonna just take stock right here as we try to get Feke's back into the mix. Hey, we... my mic was muted. Oh, there we go. Yeah, no problem. I was, uh, I was mentioning though. <laughs> I was mentioning Tick B. He doesn't seem as comfortable on this Elise as he was the Ramus. He seems like maybe he was kind of pressured into picking the Elise just because it was up and didn't want to give it to Hax Defender. I feel like he had a. Oh, you know, there's no feel like it. He did have a lot better performance on the Ramus. It just seems like he's not quite hit a stride with the more offensive jungler at least. Kind of in a little bit of a struggle bus for himself. It's a one-man struggle bus this time, not a team struggle bus. So, uh, in, in not necessarily enjoying that, but you're right. He's a lot more uncomfortable. He hasn't been as active at moving himself around to try to get things done. But a lot of that is due to the extra proactivity that Hax Defender has been able to do. We saw in the last game, He's a least one of a, he's a least in main loves that champion, but wasn't as aggressive that you would expect from something like a Lee Sim. Now that he's on someone like a Jarvan, he's been a lot more proactive. One zero on run right now is building appropriately for his team and is moving around the map accordingly to help things out. They're going for Dragon number two. No teleport on Natsume. I don't think they want to do it. They're not going to do it. That's going to be a dragon and another advantage in favor of Pomona. And that's the disadvantage of not running the teleport. He may have been able to get the flank on his enemy, but when you bring the ignite, you kind of have to win your lane. You're almost ex uh, required to win your lane. And Sumei Rin did not do that, and he's kind of at a disadvantage now. He's just kind of split pushing, trying to push, uh, put pressure in these lanes. Let's see how much he's actually able to accomplish. Let's see where he's going with his build. As I'm surprised he's not going for the Gwensu's Rage Blade. I believe you can get the uh, the Rage Blade on on a Trindamir as well. Yeah, he can if he wants to, <clears throat> but I think he's just gonna. I think he's just gonna rely a little bit more um, on the Warlord's Bloodlust to help things out. But here we go, round two, Deja Vu. Oh three members my god! The one half, of, one half health power strike from Prime, but. Pops ult, 5, 
It's gonna go down after it ends, though. Tax Defender Cataclysm will only keep everyone out. He's still gonna go, uh, a tick feed, rather, is still gonna go down. Try not save him at the Tom Kinch. So, very, very misposition, a misplaced team fight, or I guess skirmish from Fullerton. They're just not getting what they want out of this. We saw in game one how great they perform when they're firing on all cylinders, but now they're so concerned with how well they believe that they can do with their champion spikes as well as their champion fighting, and it ends up not working out in their favor. They go up, end up losing all three members that they sent to the top lane. Yes, Heinous Crime went down, but still, it didn't work to their perfection. It's now on the backs of Otis and 80 Chaos. Your laner, or your top laner, and your jungler are essentially tilting right now. They're not in the best position mentally. So you need to rally the troops. You need to say, all right, guys, it's time to do something. Let's get this. This is how we need to act. This is how we need to push forward. Because that's the only way they're going to come back in this game. Yes, Pomona is playing flawlessly. There is a very high chance that they pull away this game victorious. But that doesn't mean that Fullerton is completely out of the mix. They have the option, they have the availability to do so, but it's all going to come down to their shot callers and calling the right calls at the right time. Because as of right now, the play calling scoreboard is most certainly going in favor of Pomona. Yeah, and they've, like I said, they've just been capitalizing on every small mistake that Fullerton has been uh, making. It's been very huge. This Heinous crime on Jax has been huge, and actually, not only that, Hacks Defender has been doing great on the Jarvan as well. Very, very well played. I think they could have gotten Baron, but they were actually trying to bait out Fullerton to see if they can get a catch. It didn't happen. Just kind of just a little bit of time. Assuming Rin is just going to go back to pushing top lane. Now he's attracted three into the top lane. That's what you're wanting to do. You're wanting to apply as much pressure across the map. You don't have a teleport, so when you commit to the split push, it has to be 100% all the way. That sends members up, but it wasn't at the correct time. This is, again, another miscommunication on Fullerton's part. When you're able to draw that many members, when you're able to do something, what's the next step? You have to push forward. You have to try to get an advantage from that. But the wave clear coming out of Silver Midget, as well as the reaction from everybody else, is proving detrimental. Well, the flash being born right there from Hacks Defender, that's not what they're going to want. A little bit extra aggression oh, might man. prove disastrous. Opportunities are being missed by both sides. There was a yeah, flash wasted by Hacks Defender, but a cocoon landed on Silver Midget. Nobody in a position, just a, a, maybe like one or two Teemos out of position to be able to capitalize on that one. So, yeah, small mistakes being made. And really, nothing being gained by Fullerton right now. One flash down for uh, Pomona, but it's really proving to be a huge detriment to them right now. And Fullerton is having to play so much more reactionary at this point in time because you have such a strong team fight composition from Pomona, you're forced to kind of play around where Pomona wants to play. That's not what you want to do. You have to try to be a little bit more proactive. This is again where you see the shot calling from the other members, but oh, Silver oh, Midget. Oh my gosh, the flash away from the shockwave. Silver Midget just destroyed Big Otis. Meanwhile, Lupa fighting over the Baron, technically, it's going to be a huge fight for Al Poly. That is able to pick up the enemy ADC, ADC, ADC Chaos going down. And finally, there's Trindamir. He's getting to the back line. Natsumi Rin able to shut down Lock on Stratus, but. Still gonna go down himself, more than likely. Everyone's on his case. It's a four for one right now in favor of Pomona. They just need to lock down Natsumi Ren to get the ace. It's actually taking them quite a bit. He's dragging them all around the jungle, and it to, gets to a point where you have to wonder, like, is this really worth it? But at the same time, Anus Crime is split pushing, so at least they are getting something out of this. There you go. Oh. Dragging that big sword takes a, toll, takes a toll on you after a while. Yeah. They're going to be able to get that unstoppable Ghost Silver Midget. We haven't touched upon him as much as what we should have in this game thus far. He's been doing a phenomenal job going for a CDR control build with the Lucidity Boots as well as the Rhylize Crystal Scepter. But it's working out totally in his favor right now. 5-0-3 Hacks Defender taking a step up from the last game. He's also... Three, zero, and six. So that's two members right now of Pomona 
doing such a good job at prioritizing where they need to be on the map at all times. I love the way that their decision making is rolling off right now. It's a lot more coordinated than it was in the last game, and it's a lot more in the face, I guess you could say, of Fullerton. They know that they win the team fights. They know that they can force these 5v5s and come out victorious. So that's exactly what they're doing. They're applying the pressure, they're pushing themselves forward, and they're acting accordingly. There was that last fight where it kind of, the actions of AD Chaos really embalmed everything that Fullerton was doing. He jumps right into the team, uh, overestimating a little bit of his damage. It didn't end up working in his favor, and that proved disastrous for everything that Fullerton is trying to do. Pomona right now doing their best. Like I said, they won a game three. They're doing everything in their power to make that happen. And if it keeps going this way, it is going to go to a game number three. Our first game number three of the entire day. This whole day of best of threes. Anus Grimes, slip pushing, taking that turret down so fast. AD Chaos can't even get down in position to stop it before it's taken down. Meanwhile, that Fumi Rin go down. Cataclysm, nice knock up from Luffy's cancel. Spin to win on to Lock and Stratus. He's going to pick up that kill. On Stratus, 5 2 2 now. This is a huge amount of power on Pomona. The comfort pick in the Trendomir not working out to their advantage, but all credit is where credit is due. The members of Pomona are firing on all cylinders. Heinous Crime out, might actually. He's oh, wow, gonna he get out. Away. He is too tanky right now. That's sort of catch. No one else follow it up besides him. And they haven't been together like they should. Big bullet time coming out. There's the Baron going down. For us, Cal Poly. Now, it's like they are going to go on the offensive, but their health bars are low. They have to be careful. Axe Leader almost dead. Looks like they're going to completely disengage from this. They're going to stall this out. This is a good job. This is a stall out. You've got Natsumi coming in very, very soon. You've got a little bit of damage from Atik. He's going to be forced to disengage now. They're going to try to get something done, force it out. But this ends up coming out as a win in favor of Fullerton. They stopped the Baron. They stopped everything through. That's exactly what they need. That's exactly what they want. They might actually try to do it. Nope, I stand corrected. They know the backs are coming. Pax Defender is lurking around. Not okay. sure you want to do this, Fullerton. All right, I thought, okay. I saw the icons. I thought Heinous Crime secured the Baron, but it was actually the Baron securing Heinous Crime. I see that now. Sorry about that. So yeah, Baron's still up. And Triforce complete by Heinous, uh, for Heinous Crime. So he's just going to put out even more damage, but not able to capitalize on the low health bars of Cal Poly Pomona. They really need to prioritize vision more than they did in the last game. We look at what things that Fullerton did well. Not only did they put the gold in the right places, not only were they a little bit more patient in their team fights, but it all came down to the vision control and knowing exactly where Pomona was. That's not happening in this match. Pomona is being a lot more proactive with their wards they're being a lot more successful with their vision control dragon number three being secured not a single ward on the bot side of the map as heinous prime was able to pick that up in a way flawlessly and now is time if you're cal state fullerton what do you do you have to reconvene you have to figure out all right guys this is what we're doing wrong this is how we need to do it if you're the side of Pomona, however, what are you thinking? Keep doing what you're doing. Your jungler's doing fantastically. Your mid laner is carrying the team. Silver Midget now has a Rabadon's death cap. So those lasers are going to be cranking out so much more damage. And this is a situation that you find yourself in. And it's how you come out of that that's really going to decide this game or game two. Dun, 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 dun. He has the Nats, uh, na uh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, Heinous Crime slip pushing the entire time while that happened. And he does have the teleport over Natsumi Ren. Yeah, sorry about the uh, mute button. It's been a long day. Winding <laughs> down here as Al Pauly going in onto the Baron. I think they're finally going to get it this time around. 
There's no Natsume to help them out. So yeah, you're right. That's going to be an easy Baron for them. They're going to secure at 9,000 gold lead now. Six towers to three, but more importantly, all the gold in all the right places. The mid laner, the 80 carry. This is exactly what we saw on the other side for Cal State Fullerton in the last game. Now you see Pomona. They're taking a play out of their playbook and they're doing the damage. Holy Time to go in. Max Defender's just going to dive into the back line. There is a full of time coming out. No matter damage. Well, Simple Fidget is picking himself up double kill. Meanwhile, Heinous Crime also picking himself up a kill. That does actually go over to a triple kill. That was a clean ace. Just out of nowhere. Huge, huge engage from Pomona, and they are going to take this to game number three. Game number three is going to happen. Pomona, like we said, took a play out of the playbook from Cal State Fullerton, taking away the victory. Pomona, game three, series tied one and one. Cal State Fullerton, what are you going to do? Yeah, it is a sticky situation because they were, they were heavily in control of game number one, and this is complete reverse this time around. And now they have to think, what do we do on the back foot? It didn't keep, uh, did not keep Pomona down. Fullerton, they have to counter back and say, and bring themselves up. It's like, hey guys, cannot keep ourselves down. We have to bring, we have to win this in game number three. Let's go. Let's let's see what we do. And uh, it's going to be a huge pick and ban phase. I do not think we'll be seeing a trend of mirror this next game. I don't think we'll see a trend of mirror, and I really want to see what. Cal State Fullerton and Pomona decide to prioritize. Both of these games went very differently from the champion pick ban. So now it's going to be who gets their comfort champion, who gets to do something well, who gets to do something wrong. That's the decision that we're going to have to be faced. The pick ban phase is going to be vital to the success because if we saw the team fight or the uh, sorry, the pick ban phase was won by Cal State Fullerton in game one. It was won by Pomona in game two, and those games acted out accordingly. So now, what's going to happen for game three? Who's going to come away with a victory? Who's going to move on to the semifinals and play for a chance at that cash prize tomorrow? Yeah, we are going to find out when we come back. I'm going to get the lobby set up, game, uh, get the pick and ban phase going, and uh, we'll be back in just a moment. My name is Joshua Feck Esquest here with Bill Jump Carter. Stick around.
All right, we are back for the third and final game of the evening. This time, well, I guess not really this time. It's still <laughs> Cal Poly Pomona versus CSU Fullerton. My name is Joshua Fekes Quest here with Bill Jump Carter. And these bands, very telling of how the games went in the first two of, these, of this series. If you're just now joining us. These bands are uh, uh, tell an entire story. They do indeed. What worked in one game, what worked in the other... Let's try to find something that's going to apply accordingly. Now, with that being said, we do have a side swap. We're going to have Pomona taking the blue side and Cal State Fullerton taking the red. Blue through picks and bands, so there's no really need to even go over that now because we have a Malphite locked in in the top lane. Highness Crime has done very well for himself, carrying both in game one as much as he could and destroying top lane, setting that Trindomir behind in game two. So now the question is, what is he going to do with a little bit of a different playmaker in this Malphite? Yeah, it was Natsumi Rin on the uh, game on the Malphite in game number one between these two. And this time, actually it was banned out last game. This time it's going to be first picked by Pomona. So yeah, I'm going to see what he can do with that one. Meanwhile, on the side of Fullerton, hovering over the Braum, be a first pick for Braum. A tick B. Not going to go on that Ramus. Going to go back on the Elise. And I'm actually somewhat surprised on that one. And I think maybe could have done better if maybe he had a little bit more of a tanky lineup behind him. I feel like that was the Achilles heel of Fullerton. He did. They didn't have the front line, and Atik wasn't as aggressive on that Elise in the early game that you would expect her to be. He's going to have to have a lot of a different mindset coming into this game because he was not proactive in Game 2 like he was in Game 1, and he's going to have to change his style up. Now, with that being said, you do have Suzuki on that Braum, so he's going to have a little bit more play playmaking ability, but just as we say that, Hacks Defender gets onto that Jarvan again. He performed so well on that Jarvan in Game 2, much unlike the Lee Sin that he had in Game 1. So he wants to continuously apply pressure and put things down. You mix that in with the pick composition, or the pick champion that you have in the Morgana that makes things easier. But, just as we talk about that, we have AD Chaos hovering over his biggest comfort champion. Funny enough, if you look on the solo queue ratings, 80 Chaos is actually in the top five best Ezreal in North America. So this is a champion he's very comfortable with and finds a lot of success in his head. So will that pay off? We do not know. Big Otis, though, going to lock that in. Oriana going to go back with another cover pick. Three for three on the ball lady. Yeah, I really likes the ball lady. And on the, in regards to Ezreal, it's not only a... I mean, yeah, it's a cover pick, but it's actually not so bad going against uh, Pomona right now. He's not going to be caught out, whether it be um, a Cataclysm or maybe even if it's shipped away from a Dark Binding. Ezreal is one of the most mobile uh, mobile ADC champions in League of Legends. So I'm going to try to rely on that to uh, stay safe and possibly maybe go a little bit more pokey on the side of Fullerton this time around. Because you can do that, maybe poke underneath the turret. Just try to drive them back. Now, that's a, that's a big thing about Ezreal. It doesn't really push turrets that well, so that is going to be a disadvantage on the side of Fullerton. It does indeed. That's something they're going to have to worry about, and it all comes down to the final pick. They need an eight, They need a top laner that can team fight well. They need more frontline. That's the difficulty they faced in game two. So what are they going to do? Let's think about a NAR. Let's think about that. They're going to decide back and forth what they're going to do. So while that's getting locked in, it does get there locked in. We can now talk about both compositions. Very similar composition from CP Pomona in this game. They have Silver Midget who performed phenomenally onto that, <clears throat> onto that victor in game two. Lock on Stratos as well performed great on to that misfortune so they're going with picks that they performed well in game two very handily so it's now up to fullerton's to flip this coin to flip them on their bad end they've got a much better composition this game it's going to be up to 80 chaos a lot to be able to hit those skill shots because ezreal being one of the highest damage output if you hit all of his skill shots is great but it's hitting those and staying safe, it's going to be a priority for him. Because with Hacks Defender and Highness Crime diving into that back line, Ezreal is not going to be want to sitting on top of that. No, not at all. Very squishy. It's hardly any most ADCs. But yeah, lock on Stratus. Locking in the uh, MF once again. 
really like the MF and actually added more wombo combo as a uh, as the kids say as you say <laughs> up in that uh, top lane with a malphite adding to the cataclysm so big opportunity for bullet times they have a lot of aoe just ultimates coming out from pomona they are really looking for that team fight while on the side of fullerton yeah they just kind of want a front line i don't honestly still really not sure they want a ball carrier of course with and they got that with the natsumi rin but still kind of questionable i feel like i feel like in uh, the last two games fullerton they've just been a little bit outpicked in this pick and ban phase they have indeed i think that Again, at the end of the day, we're gonna have to sit back. We're gonna have to sit back. We're gonna have to look at this, and we're gonna have to see what is going through the minds of both of these teams. It's very obvious what's going through the head of Pomona right now. They know what works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So they go right back to roughly the same composition that they went in game two. And then you look on the flip side. What do you see coming out on the side of Fullerton? They're having a little bit of an adjustment. They have a better comp than they did in the last game. But will it prove enough? That's the question we're going to have to ask ourselves. Because while Ezreal is a great pick for AD Chaos, it's a comfort champion for him, how well can he perform on that champion in this against this composition is going to be vitally important. Because when you get to the later stages of the game, Jarvan, as well as that Malphite, start racking up a little bit of armor that's when this scary, scary Ezreal isn't going to be as scary no more due to the lower damage output that he's going to have in comparison to another hyper carry. So two things we got to look out for, how they're going to play their win conditions, and is Fullerton going to be a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more proactive? Because the proactivity coming on Pomona was what set them in Game 2 and is what has them geared, set hopefully in their heads, to win Game 3. Yeah, we're gonna see how that turns out. Minute time, uh, one minute left on the delay. So I'm going to throw it over to some music. Gonna give a shout out to Brain Gear, Twitch.tv, and Alpha Draft for sponsoring us. Thank you for making all this possible. And of course, everyone watching at SummonersCon and on Twitch.tv, thank you very much. My name is Joshua Fekas Quest here with Bill Jump Carter. Be back in just a moment on the Rift. We are back. Final game of the evening between Cal Poly Pomona and California State University Fullerton. My name is Joshua Feck Esquest here with Bill Jump Carter. It's last game of the day, bro. How you seen Ooh, it? Last, last game of the day. The winner of this match will go on to face UCLA in the semifinals for the West Coast Regional. We are here at Summoner's Con. What's up, everybody? For those of you that are still alive, still around, and still hanging out with us, thank you all so much as well to everyone in the Twitch chat right now. What's up? What's up? Let's get going. So Let's get out, ready to go. It's easy for Summoner's Con. It's two hours uh, It's two hours different for us. Well, for, for me. It's 11 o'clock for you, 10 o'clock for me, 8 o'clock for them. It's still kind of early, especially at a con. You kind of stay up and party. This is what I do. So, uh... I don't feel bad for them at all. They're not staying up late. <laughs> <laughs> no, not indeed. But they are excited. They are ready to rock and roll. 
We're not having anything too crazy. Both teams respecting that line of scrimmage that is the river running through the middle. And it's time to see what these teams are going to do. Game three is on the line. This is, you're correct, the first best of the first game three in today in and just consequentially all of the tournament thus far. Yeah. So if there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of hype, you could say, built up to this game because the winner, again, goes on to the semifinals and has a chance to move themselves towards that young money cash prize. What are they going to do? How are they going to apply the pressure? It all comes down to hacks and a teak. What are they going to do to do themselves forward? A teak didn't perform as well as what you had hoped for him on that Elise last game. Hacks had a little bit of the opposite. Are the tides going to turn? Are things going to reverse a 180? Or is one just going to simply outduel the other? Tell me, Bill. Bill, that's, tell me. <laughs> that's the point of the game. I'm Actually, not, I, I know. I, time will tell us. Time will tell. And maybe Hacks Defender and Atik will tell us. Because, yeah, I think he's got to be thinking about that last game. He's got to know. He's like, all right, guys, like, I, I can do this. Like, I, I, I'm, I can play at least. So we had a little bit of an odd team comp last game. I'm going to make it up to you. And he's going to try his best. But it wasn't just the team comp, it seemed like, for uh, Fullerton. It just seemed like Cal Poly, they were outplaying them in every turn. Really taking off in the early game. So let's see if they can get that going this time around. Wave being shoved in the bot lane in favor of the lock on Stratus and Mookies. It's, a, it's pretty easy to farm underneath the turret for in Ezreal, so I don't think this is going to be too big of a detriment for him. No, I want to see what AD Chaos is going to decide to go with the Ezreal build. We've seen oh, yeah. a little bit of everything from the tier build is still something that people are pulling out. The preferred build in my head with one that I enjoy seeing the most is Essence Reaver into a Trinity Force. That's going to give you the mana regen, that's going to give you a lot of damage, but more importantly, that's going to give you 40% CDR. With that, however, you need to be farming spot on flawless. And so a lot of this early game, I feel, from the side of Fullerton is gonna come down to how are they going to or how are they going to play this lane? Passive. They need to farm up. They've got protection from Suzukai. They've got the poke as well as the easy farm damage or the farm abilities from an Ezreal. And that's how they're going to have to play this lane. They need to find a way to get these other lanes rolling and up and going. Silver Midget single-handedly tore Big Otis to the ground that last game. So it's now going to be up to Atik to try to see if he can alter that a little bit. Or is he going to focus towards the top? That's what we're seeing right now. Uh, Natsume is hard pushing this to try to get this to reset itself. Atik lurking around. It's gonna be hard. It's I don't think Phoenix Prime is going to shove himself up too far. He's gonna gnar out. Hold on. Oh, he's still gonna walk into the cocoon. This is a lot of damage. Wallop is going to slow him down, and the first blood going over to Atik. So very nicely played. I guess the patience it did pay off. Patience played off indeed. Atik already flipping a 180 from the last game. He sat and farmed up the majority of the early game and didn't have an impact that ended up losing them a lot of the early game and inevitably the entirety of the game itself. So this time, they played on the wave management very well. Uh, Natsume was able to push himself up correctly. Atik was able to get right into the push. And then what happened? It came right down to a beautiful cocoon, a lot of damage, and this is exactly what you want. You want to get Atik ahead because when he gets ahead, things start running a lot smoother. It's when he starts to tilt, when he starts doing poorly, that things start to fall apart. So this is a very good move for the members of CS Fullerton. They need to get something going if they want to come out of this game three victorious. Yeah, nice. So far so good for Fullerton. Nice dark binding on the bottom, onto AD Chaos. Suffers a little bit of damage for him, but they do have a big old Brom, big brute. Gonna help him out and keep him, uh, keep him alive. A little bit longer, not too much damage being followed up onto there. Lock on Stratus. What is he trying to pull? Going into a bush, nothing much happening. Just trying to roam around. Let's see where this game goes. Hax Defender, he's hovering around the uh, Rift Scuttler along the dragon. He's gonna get that vision control in the, in the river. Let's see what he can do with that. Not really much in the way of ganking potential for him. I'm going to find out where a tick is. 
Placing down some wards, trying to keep uh, keep that track of the jungle path. Now this is definitely something that you see, uh, that you saw as a consistency from Pomona in games one and two. Hax Defender, as well as the other members, have really tried to prioritize a lot of jungle entrance exit vision to help figure out where the other members of the team are. So as this lane phase goes out, as the early game starts to progress, it's going to be, where are we going to spot out other members? If you look at Atik, he actually went straight for the Sheen, so he wants to crank off a little bit more damage, as well as going for the refillable potion. So he's wanting to stay healthy, he's wanting to be active, and that's gonna be important moving forward. This is an Atik that we are used to seeing in previous matches. Aggressive, moving around the map and trying to apply some pressure. So that's what he's wanting to do. He's lurking around in the mid lane right now. If Silver Midget pushes up a little bit more, that could spell disaster. And let's take a look at this item build on Atik. He's going huge offensive. Oh no, that's the room. That builds into room. Man. <laughs> it does. Yes. It's been a long day, Fed. It's, it's been a very know. long day indeed. So glad you things said it. get crazy, you get mixed up, you end up head over heels over things that you, know, you just was, didn't think was there. I was really excited. I was really excited for the uh, for the for the uh, Lich Bane Elise jungle. Yeah, I don't know. My dreams are crushed now. <laughs> it works. It it still has its it still has its uh, stuff, I guess you could say. Yeah. A little bit of a little bit of merit, not much, but it still works right here. We're seeing a lot of a farm up. We're starting to see a little bit of an advantage actually on the side of Cal Poly, um, of, sorry, of Cal Poly Pomona, as Silver Midget and Stratos are starting to pull ahead of their laners. But here we go, Atik, the ever aggressive, wanting to do something, lurking around. Bullet time was forced out by Stratos. That's a huge cooldown blown. The ward is shown, so the disengage could happen if they want. If the pings come here, the pings come there. Oh, Cataclysm into the mid lane on the big Otis. We'll see who kills who, but in the bot lane, flash and alt from uh, Suzy Kai. Who is missing on the lock on Stratus, and that might actually save him. Nice counter engage by Mookies with the Soul Shackles. Not able to get the killing blow onto Suzy Kai. So everyone's going to survive in that bot lane. Meanwhile, more action in the top lane. Big Nar swipe onto Heinous Crime. He's going to get a boulder thrown into his face, but he is a boulder himself, so he's still going to survive. Walk out of there limping, if anything. Action all across the board, but it didn't end up working really in anyone's favor. And this is a huge win, believe it or not, for both teams. You generally don't attribute attrition or a stalemate to uh, an advantage on both teams, but at nine minutes in the game, both sides of the rift need items. They need this ability to scale up. They need to be able to consistently push themselves up in this correct uh, manner. And so the best way to do that is to make sure that if I can't get anything, neither can you. That's exactly what happened on both sides of the field. They were able to reset themselves accordingly. Now we're starting to see teams be able to go back. Both 80 carries are rushing for the Essence Reaver, so whichever one gets that first is going to be a little bit better off in that regard. You're starting to see a little bit more of movements, a little bit of this and that, but all across the board, about a 200 gold advantage on the side of Cal State Fullerton. Nothing out of the ordinary, nothing out of the advantage. They are clinching their muscles. Game three is really putting everyone to the test. Yeah, both sides. So far, 10 minutes, like you said, going even. So really not wanting to give up that semi-final semi spot. Plays coming out for both sides right now. Here comes some Rome. Nice catch onto Silver Midget, but look, he's there. To help him out, his presence going to uh, drive away a possible 3v1 attack. It's a very nice roam for full supports into the mid lane. Gonna throw him around, gonna try to get something, but again, if I can't get something, neither can you. That's exactly what these teams are trying to figure out. You're having a, a CS advantage over for Silver Midget right now. If he's able to maintain this lead, that could prove very scary for Cal State Fullerton because this is something that we saw in the last game. When Silver Midget gets rolling, Silver Midget turns into a giant and starts destroying the other members. But here we go, the aggression is on. Oh, the two-shot barrage actually looked like it missed. And here comes the counter engage from Hacks Defender. Big bullet time coming out from 
lock on Stratus. Teleport coming in from the NAR. Let's see what Natsumi Rain can get. He's actually going to get a kill onto Hacks Defender, but there's still some action into the river. Heinous Crime ramming his boulder self right into the face of AD Chaos, and he's just a pretty boy. Ezreal cannot take that sort of punishment. He goes down two for three, in, or two for four, no, yeah, two for three in favor of Cal Poly. And the question goes, who came out on top? Because while it was a little bit of an even, it's where the gold got pumped. It's where you're going to find more of this advantage due to who acquires the gold and who can get the items they need. You look at how it worked out, it ends up going in favor of Pomona. Why? Because all three of those kills were all accredited in some form or fashion over to Stratos. He gets a kill as well as two assists. And then they evenly distributed the other ones over to Hacks as well as Heinous Crime. Atik ended up picking up that kill. That's great, it's fine and dandy, but it might not end up working the way that they want it to because they need to get the gold into AD Chaos. They need to get the gold into Big Otis. They have champions that require gold, that require items to find forms of success. So that's what they have to look forward to. That's what they have to try to force the issue on because if they can efficiently supply the gold, that's when they find advantages. But right now, they haven't done it the way that they need to. Pomona, however, have done that to a T. They're starting to get themselves up and put themselves in a much better place at 12 minutes in the game. Yeah, and actually, this is a reversal. So, a lot of gold going on, especially into lock on Stratus. But let's look at the top lane for one moment. The past two games, Natsumi Rin has been bullied by Heinous Crime, but this time, He'll turn around, picking up that Gnar, who is a traditional bully, as he uh, uses the boomerang and the auto attack to get that hypercharge attack, or hypercharge um, percent health damage. Very well, can he contain the crime? Very well, and it's a nice turnaround. As far as Nasumi Ren is concerned, from how the last two games have been going, he's been getting bullied himself, and now he's doing the bullying. That's actually on. Hold on one second. Wow. True Shot Barrage is going to lock on Stratus. He's going to get knocked up by the Relation uh, Fissure. And it might be the fact because here comes Ax Defender. Nice Bull Shackle. Oh. Nice Cataclysm. And a huge bullet time going to take out AD Chaos. Very, very nice use of the ultimates from Cal Poly Promoter's Bot. That's the strength of the Wombo. When you have a MF as well as a Jarvan into the game, you're going to find so much success when you can chain those ultimates together. Coupled with the beautiful Soul Shackle from Mookie's, that ended up working so well in Pomona's favor. They're able to get to a kill onto AD Chaos. They're able to secure the tower and push themselves forward. But a little bit of a give and take as Natsume is able to successfully acquire that top turret, so that's going to be a little bit of an advantage. He's doing very well in this top lane. This is the first game of the three that he's actually been able to maintain a lead over Highness Crime. He's got the Brutalizer completed as well as 30 CS onto his laner, doing a very stellar job at locking down Highness Crime and helping things out. But here comes Atik, forcing the Unstoppable Force away. He's going to come out alive. Yeah, but that is an ultimate down, and that is a pivotal ultimate whenever you want a team fight. But they have a lot more in their pocket, which we saw in the bot lane. Soul Shackle and Cataclysm is pretty huge. So you do want that unstoppable force, but it's not absolutely needed. So this is actually really well played in the pick and ban phase by Pomona. They have a huge combo, but they don't need everybody to participate. They only need a few members to really lock down the power of Block on Stratus' uh, bullet time. So I'm very excited they, to see this. I'm sorry. They do indeed, but oh, we might have to pause again. Oh, the shockwave not hitting anybody. The ball was on top of Big Otis. So big misplay by him. He's still going to get the minions here, but he's going to live and go back. But a little bit on a mental tilt with that shockwave. The sombrero ult, it always is a good feeling. Yeah. Not really, but no. it's okay. It happens. Hey, it's late in the day for them just as well as it's late in the day for us. It's been a long day. Summoner's Con always making sure to impress. We have a little bit of everything at Summoner's Con today, from pros to Nikki Taylor coming in and doing her thing. But now we just got ganks in the mid lane. Yeah, Silver Midget. Oh, no, he actually dodges the uh, 
Glacial Fissure. And Tick B not gonna go in onto this one. So that's very interesting. That's an extremely cautious play by Tick B. Nobody was around. Probably could have got it. That Simi Rin throwing a boomerang off from the side, but not even gonna hit him. Silver Midget, he makes it out, and that's a big ego stroke for him, because he just got a lot of stuff thrown at him. He didn't even phase him. Comes out unscathed. That's exactly what he's wanting to do. And we talked about it in the last game. He's perfectly capable and utterly capable of carrying his team to victory if he's able to find some kind of success. And Tico gets caught. I don't think he wants to be here. Yeah, he's going to get soul shackled. No more repel for him. He does have the flash, but he's still... He's flashing into the enemy side. So you have to wonder, was that really worth it? I don't know. Hey, Matsumi Rin. So you get... Mega Gnar ultimate onto Mookie's, but unstoppable force. It's back up from before. Flash over the wall from that Sigurin. Black Shield gonna keep paying his crime in pursuit. Silver Midget there to join him. They're still going to pursue, but now in the bot lane, I don't think an Ezreal can 1v1 a misfortune, unless, of course, you kite them with, with the uh, Mystic Shots. That both are just gonna disengage. A lot of damage going into that mid lane turret in favor of uh, Fullerton. But still, nothing really gained. And a lot of, it seems like a lot of things traded, but really nothing gained overall as far as objectives for both teams. No, there is a little bit of a tilt or a little bit of a struggle from a few members of both sides, actually. But you're right, there's only about a thousand gold difference. And that's very negligible if you look at the team fight that both of these teams are able to supply. That's exactly what they're going to want to do is force a very solid team fight comp or a team fight and make things work. We talked a lot about how the success is going to ride on Otis and his shockwaves as well as AD Chaos. Well, we've already seen a Sombrero ult come out of Big Otis and we've also seen a little bit of a struggle from AD Chaos as well. So now is the time where you have to figure out, okay, this is what we need to do. This is how we need to do it. We got to find some kind of struggle, some kind of way to get out of this struggle. And that might end up being a play for this dragon right here. The first dragon of the game. Be careful, man. Silver Midget with these death rays. This guy is amazing on, on Victor. He's been landing death ray after death ray on the big Otis path. He's been doing fantastic, but the story right now, Dragon does go over to Fullerton. That is the first dragon of the game. We get that little bit of percentage health spike. True shot barrage was used, didn't hit anybody, and now Al Holly looking to try to take the lane turret, but the big shield um, protected. A great western breeze to just flow right into the sails of Cal State Fullerton. They were able to secure that dragon. They're still down about 1,200 gold, but it doesn't matter because being able to secure objective, as the pause comes out, being able to secure an objective and kind of give you a little bit of extra determination and an extra set of momentum is very beneficial for your team, even if it doesn't assort necessarily to something such as a gold mishap in that end. So really good job by them. We've got a little bit of a technical difficulty getting some people's computers set up. So that makes us able to kind of take stock at where we're at right now. Where are we at right now? We are 19 minutes in, 29.8K to 28.5K in favor of Pomona. And it's mostly just in kills right now because the turrets are even at one apiece dragon over a dragon advantage over to fullerton but that's i mean that's not really translating to too much they just now got it so they haven't had time to work with it the rift herald has not even been a factor in this game neither team has been able to get uh too much of an advantage over each other so that leaves at least both teams just kind of dancing around these objectives these turrets and not really getting too much they are going, a lot of pressure being built up because Lock on Stratus is pretty powerful. He does have his uh, main item complete in the Essence Reaver, but looking for that zeal, what do you think that's going to be built into? I think the zeal is probably going to be built into the Static Shiv. When you see a lot of the combinations from these burst heavy, these burst heavy champions, it almost always goes straight into something such as the Static Shiv. Now, there is the option that Stratos can opt to go instead for something like a Triforce. The chances of that happening is a lot less than of that of a Static Shiv, but as an analyst, you have to kind of weigh all the different sides and figure out kind of 
what different perspectives they might choose. So there is a slight chance of that because the Sheen Spellblade procs, procs work very well onto that, uh, the double up from the Misfortune. So it is an option. Uh, if he wishes to employ that, that's going to be up to him, of course. But here we go. We are right back into the game. They're pounding away at this turret. Meganar is gone. So that's a lot less of a fighting ability that we see coming from the members of Cal State Fullerton. And the decision making by Natsume to manage this rage bar, this gnar bar, as we say, is going to be very vital to their success because being able to have that gnar ultimate coupled with the ultimate coming out of Otis is going to decide whether or not Cal State Fullerton rises up to the challenge in this quarterfinal match or if they're just going to end up falling straight down. Man, yeah, both teams just back and forth with just trading. They're not really capitalizing on anything yet. Both teams have decent wave wave clear and wave. Uh, you know, I guess turret siege. So unstoppable force is meeting an immovable object right now. Playing <laughs> that unstoppable force might be not to so be Rin, but with some company and help, he is trying to make it the advantage here. There's a little dark binding onto him from Mookie's from the side, flanking very nicely timed. Giving the kill over to lock on Stratus. That is a Gnar down. Ooh, but more action. Hold on, Big Otis. He's almost going to get bursted down. Wait, going to keep him alive. And Tick B needs to be careful. Glacial Fisher coming out from the side, disengaging that team fight. And once again, a big chess match where pawns are taken away on both sides, and no one really gets the board advantage. But the advantage, the slight advantage, slight, yeah. is going to go over to Stratos because we talk a lot about how when you have these team fight compositions, when you have these very solid players that can really uh, take an advantage and move it into a team victory, it's where are you going to have that efficiency? Where are you going to create these opportunities? And who are you going to create these opportunities with? Well, for Cal Poly Pomona right now, it's in the hands of Lock on Stratos. He's wanting to carry his team now this game. It all came down to Silver Midget in game one or game two. It's now in the hands of Lock on Stratos. He's 3-0-2, doing a phenomenal job on this misfortune and really pushing his team. But now it's Heinous Crime, the one that gets caught out. Yeah, will he be able to pick up a kill in return? He does not. This time that's Rin picks up that one. 5.2k to 32.7k. These kills. Going back and forth, if you keep get, trading one kill for another kill, you're just going to stay about the same amount of gold apart. That's what's been happening. The turret advantage is finally in the favor. Mona, and they are going to try to, I would assume, try to position themselves to take advantage of this map presence that they've just opened up. So now, if we look at it retrospectively of what these teams did in the previous game, because that's kind of the biggest telltale of what the future might hold, both of these teams, when they found themselves ahead, played very cautious, they played very methodical. Now, the question will be, can Fullerton force that out of someone like these players of Cal Poly Pomona? Because that's what's going to have to happen. They don't need them to play passive, they don't need them to play cautious, because they're going to essentially end up outscaling them. The damage that Silver Midget can crank out, as well as the insane amount of damage from Stratos and the control that Heinous Crime can pull out, is going to prove detrimental to the success of Fullerton. So they need to force the issue. They need to find ways to force the issue. And right now, this simple back and forth is just not going to cut it because the later in the timers, the later that this game gets on the rift, the better it's going to be for Cal Poly Pomona. Yeah, that's pretty much what they're going for in the later game. It's approaching 25 minutes. This might be the most docile game we've had so far. Both teams playing so cautious. You know what's on the line. Semi-finals, game number three. It's the last chance for both teams. Dragon is going to be up in about one minute. Max Defender clearing out some wards around the area. To the vision control. The yeah. vision control by Pomona, Pomona is, so mo is so much better than you see from Fullerton right now. And a lot of it is due to how proactive they are at denying the vision. When we talk about vision control, it's not always about how much vision you have, it's about how much vision you're denying 
from the other team. And that's exactly what Pomona has been successfully doing. The Pixel Brush is remaining unscathed right now as it's going to barely get itself done up. But the Vision Control again by Pomona at really denying a lot of this dragon. Dragon Vision is good. Great, great defensive wards. Big amount of damage. And Silver Midget did the same thing he did last game. He flashed out of the Shockwave. Now Hax Defender wants to take advantage of a, a big old that's not in the area. Heinous crime from the side. Kai, he goes down. Now Hax Defender, he wants more. There's a the big ultimate from a block on Stratus, clearing away. Tick B underneath his own turret, and that is going to be inner mid lane turret going down in favor of Pomona. They may just keep shoving into the inhibitor here. Natsumi Rin making his way over from the side. It's too much of a difference though. No, he's not. There's really not much AD Chaos can do. He's just going to throw the Mystic Shots out to just hope that it does something, but he doesn't have the damage to be able to crank that out. That is going to be the gate opened for Pomona right now. They are putting Fullerton to the backs of the wall. This is game three. All is on the line if you want to progress in the West Coast Regional. And that's exactly what Pomona has on their menu. That's exactly what they want to order. The, it's almost cooked up. It's almost ready to go. That inhibitor is wide open. They're going to go back. They're going to buy items. They're going to try to progress a little bit. And here we are. Pomona in the driver's seat. Ready to rock and destroy the hopes and dreams of Cal State Fullerton. They don't have Dragon Control, though, over that one, but it seems like Dragon isn't much of a factor in these games. So, Pomona, they're just, they're willing to give, give the Dragon up in favor of possibly establishing wards, getting more map control, and clearing wards, like they're doing right now, over the more important objective, like Baron. So, very well played so far by Pomona. And we're going to Dragon. If they're getting kills out of it, Suzukai uh, is still going to go down, because Silver Midget, he is a death ray beast. Hit anybody, Hacks Defender. Just, oh wow, okay, a Tick B actually. Fell into the Cataclysm, still go down. Nice Shockwave from Big Otis. Soul Shackles coming out from Mookie's. Every one of them is broken though. There's static, a lock on Stratus. The flash auto attack is all it takes to take down a low health bar of a Tick B. That is going to be the mid lane inhibitor going down. Fullerton, they are falling fast in Pomona. They are climbing rapidly every effort <coughs> excuse me every effort that fullerton has been making right now is just not working out in their favor it was a great three man shockwave but by otis but he doesn't have any damage he's been farming up all right but it's not in a place that he needs to be he doesn't have the death cap finish he doesn't have any other damage to help himself out that's the struggle that they're facing they don't have the damage to try to crank things out they don't have the ability to just shut down these members we talked a lot about how silver midget has been doing his job but so is locked on stratus they have put the semi-final berth into their scope and they're doing everything they can to hit a perfect shot into the bullseye they are breaking the roles of a carry and doing it very well right now and that's exactly what it's going to take to push themselves forward doing a great job so far Vision. Actually, it looks like, yeah, Fullerton, they know they know a Baron is going to come soon. They're going to clear as much vision as possible and hope for possibly a steal. This is kind of where, okay, so I'll ask you, what do you do at this point when you're Fullerton? Because it's kind of all you can do, it seems like, is hope for a steal or maybe a catch, but they're not in position. Their wards are being cleared. What do you do at this point if you're Fullerton? You have to find a pick at this point in time. If you look at their wards, they've got okay defensive wards, but it's on the wrong side of the map. They need something on the top side of the map. They know that this Baron is happening. There's no denial that it's not. You're going to have a blue shot barrage try to come out to get something, but it's going to prove inefficient, ineffective, and unworthy as the Baron Nasher now going over in favor of Cal Poly Pomoma. They're up 7,000 gold. The carries are doing exactly what they were designed to do. They're doing everything well. Then it goes down, out of position once again. And here comes, they can just tower dive now. AD Chaos just gets melted. Silver Midget with a double kill onto that one. A triple kill with his Lich Bane auto attack empowerment. And he takes the turret. Because why not? Silver Midget, he's the carry here. He wants to prove it's not lock on Shadows, but both of them have incredible KDAs right now. 
That's going to be three deaths and another inhibitor here for Pomona. They are rocking, rolling, and doing everything they can to put themselves into the semifinal match. They've got the Banner of Command and the Baron. They might actually try to do this. They've got a lot of damage. They might try to do it. They're doing everything they can. It might be tough. Silver Midget keeping that Sumi Rin busy and actually takes it down. 703. The Nexus turret. The turrets are down. The Nexus is going down. This is Cal Poly Pomona advancing to the semifinals over, over California State University Fullerton. That was a tremendous effort. The come from behind victory by every member of Pomona. They did what they needed to do. They found themselves in a tough spot after game one, but they turned it right around. They did exactly what needed to be done. They secured game two, and they single-handedly, overwhelmingly end up going for a monstrosity, a mon monstrous of a win. That's the word we're looking for. Monstrous of a win <laughs> in game three, securing their their semifinal berth. Look at how well distributed these kills, assists, and every member did their contribution part. Two members had double digits in the assist range. Got a couple deaths on the side of heinous crime, but it doesn't matter as he put in his best effort. This was a team effort. We talk about every day League of Legends is a team game, and that's exactly what rose Pomona up out of the depths from the game one loss. They put on the backs of their carries. They worked as a team. They got the game two, the game three. Now they're headed to the semifinals. And congratulations to Pomona. But Fullerton, you just go enjoy Summoner's Con. It's still a win-win. It was still a win for you because now you get to be at Summoner's Con. So congratulations to both teams. But it is going to be Cal Poly Pomona advancing. So that's going to be it for today. I have the schedule thrown up on the stream. Go ahead and check that out. We are going to be back at the same time for tomorrow. And that is... Uh, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for four more best of threes. We're going to decide the third, first, and a second place in these uh, in this uh, West Coast Regional. But I do want to give a shout-out to our sponsor before we go. Brain Gear, at NSF certified daily brain supplement. No sugar, only five calories. Go check them out at drinkbraingear.com. Alpha Draft also. Win real money playing fantasy esports. Join thousands each week as they vie to compete for $5 million in payouts. Don't miss out on that. And, of course, Twitch.tv, largest streaming company in the world. And you're watching it on – or watching us on Twitch or at SummonersCon. But we're, we're, at, we're, on, we're still on Twitch at SummonersCon. So thank you very much for supporting us and making all of this possible. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Joshua Fekas Quest here with Bill Jump Carter for the latter half of, these, of, this, uh, of the day. So catch you guys tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again. Good night.